Hey guys, welcome back to I Love Me Me. The young lady that I'm going to introduce today, her husband um, is not on camera today, but her name is Audrey. She is a fellow YouTuber and definitely after you listen to this portion of the video, make sure that you check out her channel. I will put her information at the end of the video. Can I just say how much I love you because I've looked at your channel and what you're doing here is commendable. I, the minute I read what her goal was, you guys, I was all over it because that's the same goal I have. I'm like looking to cut down divorce rates and really free people up to enjoy life to the fullest and know you got to put in the work. And that's what this sister is all about. Like, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love me, 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 me. That name fits you so well. You have such um, a joy to you and such a big personality. You're meant for big things. I promise you, you're meant for big things. But it's been so nice. Um, getting to know you actually a little bit here and I look forward to getting to know you a bit more. Formally, my name is Dr. Audrey Bennett. Not a real doctor. Doctor ain't education. I actually have a PhD in theology, uh, Christian theology to be exact. I'm going to tackle on the questions and hopefully I answer the questions to the best of my abilities. What a successful marriage looks like? I think that a successful marriage looks like when both parties are willing to put in the work that's a successful marriage that's it's that simple the whole purpose of marriage is to kill self we live in a day and age where self is so like predominant that's why like you know like petty betty like you would say sister like i love when you said petty betty because petty betty is self and petty betty shows up every now and then and stuff and petty betty wants like petty betty is ego trying to be somebody but you can't talk to me like that bro look do you know why it is but then you have to remember that you signed up for this process and this process literally strips you of yourself i have become a better person because of this process and i've been at this process for 10 years you guys so me and my husband, we got married very young. I was 19 when I got married. A month later, I turned 20. Um, one of the questions here is how did we meet? We met at church. My dad was pastoring a church and he was a college student and he came in, I was a senior in high school. And so he came in and we're like college sweethearts kind of, but um, he came in and as soon as he walked through the door, I just knew. I just knew and people always say, well, how did you know? How did you know? I just knew. What made him stand out to me was the fact, it was like how he carried himself. He exuded confidence. You couldn't tell him nothing. Like at, like at first, it came off as arrogance because I'd be like, oh my God, you're so proud. What's wrong with you? But like, it, was, it wasn't him trying to be proud. It was just him knowing who he was. He knew who he was. He knew, who, like, he knew what he wanted out of life. He, he was just so sure about himself. And I loved it. That's the sexiest thing to me. It's like a man who is just powerful, who just knows who he is. Ah! You just want to jump his bones. Ah, baby, he was so hot. He was so confident. He's still confident. He knows what he wants. He has visions and aspirations and dreams. But he also has a plan to get there. So I really like that about him. I got to know him. I shook his hand and then introduced myself and I just knew, I just knew. Girl was melting, I was like, oh. Okay, what made me realize that he loved me was my ex-boyfriend, we were cool. Like he was a great guy, he was a, he was a good dude. But like I realized certain differences where if my husband called and I was doing homework, he would quickly get off the phone and say, okay, when call me when you're done versus doing my homework and then my ex calls and then it's like oh we just we just talk you know there was a concern that my husband showed towards my growth he was constantly concerned about my well-being and he would push me he would say no you can do better he constantly was pushing me i would not be a phd holder today if it was not for my husband. My husband has pushed me every step of the way. And every step of the way, I've kicked against him doing it. Like every time he brings up something, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna. And we get into huge arguments and then I do it and I'm so proud of myself and I'm like, oh my God. He actually was the one who made me do it. So I'm like, so I owe a lot to my husband because I've grown so much just being with him. Ups and downs of marriages, oh my God. Are there ups and downs? There are ups and downs because there are differences. Now you have to imagine 
he comes from a totally different family. Like when we got married, he was 22. You can imagine 22 years of being in a different family, 19 years of being in a different family, and then you wanna mesh that together. He used to brush with cold water. I brush with warm water. I don't know what that is, water. But you don't think about stuff like that. Like when he would, he would brush, I'd be like, ew, that's nasty. How can you brush with cold water? Like little things like that that you don't take into consideration. I just grew up around people who brush with warm water. Like I just feel like I gotta sanitize my brush with hot water first before, you know, doing all the do. You're literally bringing two different lives together to mesh them as one. Woo That's hard. I think God has a sense of humor because he takes two things that don't go together and says, hey, get along, get along. We've had some really, really good ups. We have three kids. We have two businesses that we run together. Those are ups. We have a ton of ups. We always, we're constantly laughing. He's my best friend. And when you're married to your best friend, it's, it makes it a lot easier, I would say, because when I'm really, really mad at him, I don't call nobody. That's one decision that I've made going into marriage is we're not going to talk to nobody about our business. So we never say anything to anybody about our business. We can joke around and talk about stuff after it happens, whatever and stuff. But in that heat of the heat of the moment, we don't talk to, we don't go venting to nobody. I don't vent to my girlfriends. He doesn't vent to nobody. And that forces you to face the person that you decided to do life with. So in those down moments, when I'm like really, really mad, I have nobody to talk to but to come and talk to him. So then I'll come up to him and be like, I'm still mad at you, but I have nobody to talk to right now. That's the only reason I'm talking to you. Did our families approve? There was a ton of tension just because we were very young. I had a lot of people tell me, why would you want to be doing this right now? I just cut everybody off. Everybody that was naysayers against me and the decision that I wanted to do, I cut them off. My parents and my family members, on the other hand, I heard a lot of things. Everybody had their own ideas of who they thought I should have been with. Everybody has ideas, but this is what I wanted. I knew what I wanted. I prayed on it. When I tell you I prayed on it, I prayed on it. I was very, very sure in my spirit. I loved where he was going in life and I wanted to be a part of it. And where he was going in life complemented where I'm going in life because I want bigger things. I want greater things. I don't want to settle for less. And he wants more out of life just like me. And so it just made sense that we would just flow well together. Obstacles that we have overcome. We've had failed. We failed at business. I think we had one huge business fail. And I think that's probably one huge obstacle that we overcame because I, because I really thought that, that situation was going to break me. I thought it was going to break me, break me. And it did a little bit. And it, it, we were in business with other people and it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. And so there was a huge feuding. There was a lawsuit. Woo! It was, it was a mess. And we were really young. I was 23 when the whole situation happened. I'm 30 now. But um, I remember having like a three month old and we didn't have a job for a whole year. Like everywhere we would go to apply, I couldn't work because I could not afford daycare. And everywhere my husband would apply, they would let him know and say, you know, you're overly qualified so we can't hire you, which is so stupid. Cause it's like, dude, I know I'm overly qualified. If I'm coming to you, it's because I need the job, right? And you would not, they would not hire him. And so we went almost a whole year of not having an income at all to, birth in a business out of that situation. And so we've had, woo, boy, we've had some rough times. We've definitely had some rough times, but he's been my best friend throughout. There's been tension. And then you have to realize you made the decision and you made a commitment to be in this relationship. And I love him so much. I just constantly have to remind myself I love him and it's not a feeling, it's a choice. I choose to love him. I choose not to walk away. I choose to love him. I choose to work on myself. I choose to uh, work on our marriage. One of the biggest things that I've learned from this process is if you're not sure about who you are, you will crumble. If it offends you that you yourself, if you feel attack, attack will hurt your relationship because if you perceive criticism as attack, you're not going to make it in a marriage at all. So you have to um, get to a point where you have self-love. 
and you're not condemning yourself and you realize that person cares about me and wants me to be better and you don't perceive everything as attack because you'll constantly be defending yourself. Trust me, I've been through it. Realize that your the spouse is not there to make you happy. You come with your happiness. You are not a half person finding another half person. You are a whole person sharing your life with another whole person. And you really have to be a whole person because then you don't offer anything to the table. I'm not talking about bringing a job to the table or bringing smarts to the table. I'm talking about what are you offering internally to the table? Because you can come with a good job, you can come with a house, a car, and it still doesn't matter. You will crack under pressure. But if you come as a whole self that can look at yourself and say, I was wrong. It doesn't take anything from me to humble myself and say, yo, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, babe, that I hurt your feelings. I have to do that a lot. Um, and he does that too. So that's what keeps it going is realizing that you got to put pride aside a lot of the times because ego is going to be like, <laughs> I'm just sick of apologizing because he never apologized to me and he wants me to apologize again. <laughs> Brother, you going to wait for this apology. <laughs> no, I can be real petty. I can be very petty. Why I continue to stay in my marriage. I continue to stay in my marriage because I love him. I look at him and he is wealth to me. Everything about him is amazing and intriguing. And he's like not my spiritual equal at all. And that's something that I really wanted. And I look at a lot of relationships and I think something that happens in relationships is you've got to find somebody that makes you better. And I'm not talking about petty better, okay? Because it's petty better. They're like, oh yeah, well, you know, I paid my rent this month, so he makes me better. No, you have to pay your rent or you will be homeless. That's not making you better. I'm talking about somebody who literally will cut you with words and say, you know what? You didn't do that right. But I know that you can do this. And then you are mad as hell at the person for cutting you down in that moment because you're like, yo, I gave it my best. And then you realize, hey, I can do better after you being mad though. Because you sulk a little bit. I sulk a little bit. And then I come back and I'm like, okay, I'll do better. And then you become better. You get over the hurdle. The grass is not greener on the other side. You just got to water your own grass. If you have to ask them what they use for their, fer what fertilizer they use for their grass, ask them. They'll tell you, use it for your own grass. Don't ditch your own grass or somebody else's grass because it's definitely not greener on the other side. It just looks that way. But some people do work on their own grass. Hello, I do. How to overcome arguments. You really have to get to the bottom of what are you really arguing about? Because a lot of arguments comes from feeling like the person is di like dissing your idea and wanting their own to prevail. So it's, it comes from like a, a perspective of feeling either attacked or you feel like you're being put down or not being valued. So what 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 is the underlying or emotion of that argument? And then you have to think for yourself, what is going to be best for us? Depending on your family dynamic, what is best for our children? What is best for you? What is best for me? What is best for us together? What is best for our future? Really taking those into consideration and realizing you got to be an adult about it. Don't be a child about it. And as females, sometimes we get into our feelings and we can be a little bit petty <laughs> and let ego prevail. But you have to remember, you have to do things for the greater or good, or you have to do things that will... Um, in turn, benefit the family. I hope that these answered the questions that you wanted me to answer. This collaboration is such a blessing. Thank you for featuring me on your channel. Um, God bless you. I really appreciate you. On my channel, my focus is sex, love, and relationships. So I do everything from enjoying your marriage and your sexual encounters <laughs> to the single life, to the love of God, anything that's on my heart relating to those three different categories I do on my channel. So do check me out. Thank All right, welcome back. So I'm hoping that you guys really enjoyed that series. Wasn't it awesome? Wasn't it powerful? Especially when she mentioned that it's a choice every single day to be in your relationship. Also, when she mentioned that don't take it as the grass being greener on the other side, work on your own lawn. Like those are very powerful things that a lot of people need to hear. A lot of people need to respect and honor because some of us think that the grass is always greener. We're jumping from relationship to relationship, relationship, and trying to get things, trying to get a different result by doing the exact same thing. You have to realize that you are the common denominator. Finally, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if this is something that you would like to see in the future. I will see you guys 
in the future <laughs> in the next video. Two Finger Salute.